viewed them. Then that play me, I just watched that the other night. Wow, that was intense movie. Awesome. How'd you liked it? It was good, man. It was awesome. So going off of that, the first question actually is from a Facebook message I got. Um, they wanted to know exactly how did you start getting into acting and then why the horror genre? Um, the, it's, it's actually kind of a funny story and I love telling it. Um, me and my husband were always a big fan of trauma and, um, and, and horror fans. We always, you know, rented horror films when we were dating and we were married, first married, and um, well, we just always have. And I, I, my dad was a huge horror fan when I was a kid, so that was just kind of natural for me. He used to scare me on the jump scares before they would happen, <laughs> and I'd get real mad. <laughs> That's awesome. But, uh, yeah, uh, we were at Gen Con, and I was working at a booth, uh, just some other booth, and um, we didn't know that Trauma was going to be there, I don't think. And we came across the booth and just started freaking out, like, oh, my God. Trauma's here and Lloyd's here. And um, we went up, and Lloyd was super awesome and really nice. And he's like, you should work at my booth. He's like, what are you doing right now? <laughs> 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 Well, I'm doing something else right now. I'm working at another booth, but, you know, I was like, maybe next time. And that, that, I was so excited. Right. And um, he gave me his card with his phone number on it. And later on, we went out drinking, and I drunk called him. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, hey, why don't you come out and drink? And he said, okay. Wow. Yeah, and he did. <laughs> So we went out to the uh, we went out to the bar, uh, the hotel bar with them, and sat and drank and had a great time. And uh, I texted him all the way home, and we just talked about stupid, weird, blood coughing stuff. And right. um, we just stayed in contact. So. Oh, that's awesome! Wow, that's drinking it. with Lloyd yeah. Kaufman. Wow. Yeah, that's how uh, I got started with trauma. But Lloyd, um, at the we were working the booth and stuff, he would say. Ellie, you should really, should really get into acting. And it didn't really ever occur to me. I was like, okay. Um, I was just having a good time working conventions. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't know that it was a possibility for me working in Indiana. Or, you know, finding acting gigs in Indiana. But right. it really is. It, I haven't uh, had anything slow down for me in, in quite a while. So... Wow, what um, a great story. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. Um, I still love, I mean, anytime Troma's in town, I always work for them. Just, they're the most fun booth at any convention ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can see that. One of my first uh, experience with Troma was Terra Firmer, and uh, that movie definitely changed my life, and been a fan ever since, so, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so on this, compared to um, the And Then You Die, and then we go in, into the Play Me part, your roles um, are a little bit, they're both somewhat similar as in victim roles, but then they're not as well. Um, like, I, I was really um, blown away by your chops in And Then You Die, because out of everything that was there, whenever you're on screen and, and your interaction with your husband on the movie, um, you know, you're it was amazing. Like you guys really made push that movie through. Um, not saying that it wasn't a good script or anything to that extent, but it was really there was a lot of substance there. And then we get into play me, and there's like no talking at all, but yet no. you're drawn in through the entire thing. How do how do you like prepare yourself for certain roles, and how was that different between the two? You think? Uh, play me, I knew it was just gonna be. You just have to get yourself in a mindset that it's going to be brutal. It's not going to be, even though looking back, it's like, I'm so proud of this and it was awesome. You have to tell yourself, you know, you're, you're not going to have a good time mm -hmm. doing something like this because if, if you're really, really having a good time, then you're not in the mindset you need to be to do something like that. Right. Um, I had a great time on the set of, and then you die. I mean, we just joked constantly <laughs> We, you know, um, the only time that we didn't, that I really wanted everybody to just kind of like chill out and let me 
get serious was my end scene, mm -hmm. which, I mean, I think it total, we probably did that end scene. It was probably like nine hours. Wow. Uh, we had a news reporter there at one point. I was like, he's got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. Um, that was the only scene in that where I really just kind of felt like everybody just needed to stop cracking jokes and let me right. get, get real. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Because, I mean, it could throw off your whole entire game, I would suspect, you know, suspect on that. So. Right. So, the play me part, um, how did you get casted for that? Did you seem like you guys kind of just blended really well on that film? So. Well, uh, the director is my husband. Oh, excellent. Well, there you go. Yeah. No wonder yeah. you guys had such a good vibe on screen. That's awesome. Yeah, um, we had uh, Jason Pilmer from Jack Pictures saw our trailer for Time to Kill, which we cut really early on, and um, it it looked great. Mm -hmm. And uh, he let Jason Hoover do, you got to do a, a film for me on the collective. He's like, this, this looks really cool. And my husband was like, well, I don't know, like, I guess. So... <laughs> so <laughs> So um, we sat in the, in the bar, we have a bar in our basement, we sat in the bar for a couple of days and just thought about what, what could, it would just be really great for a 10 minute, you know, and have enough content, you know, um, that would, and we really wanted to make something gruesome, we really wanted to make something um, that was really going to make people cringe, uh, mm. wanted to, and, and it wasn't just that, it, my husband's really great with editing and camera work. We wanted to, that was kind of our commercial for mostly harmless pictures. Okay. Like, hey, look what we can do. So. Well, I think uh, you guys, uh, I mean, it was probably the most intense 10 minutes I've ever watched. And uh, you guys really were able to capture that uh, on screen. I think it's really cool that um, even though I went to the YouTube and I watched it over there, and, um, you know, I saw some comments as, uh, wow, that there's, you know, I had to be in the perspective of the killer, and and it was more of a like a almost like a horror gore type thing. And um, um, do you guys, when you set that up, I mean, you wanted it to be graphic, but did you think the end product was exactly what you had in mind? And did you succeed in that goal? You think? I feel like we pulled off exactly what we set out to pull off. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. it was it was phenomenal. It was good work, and you did the the effects on all that, right? Yeah, yeah, I did all the effects in that. So how did you um, get involved with doing that? I mean, Well, it was my first time doing effects for, for a film. Okay. I've done, um, we did a 15-month calendar. It was like a, like a horror pinup calendar. And I did full body makeup on 15 different girls. Mm -hmm. um, so I, had, I definitely got practice with that. And I just, I've been into doing it for a while, you know. Mm -hmm. I, we've practiced just... Um, things for time to kill. Just thinking of you know what kind of things we wanted for that, and um, yeah, I really I really enjoyed doing it, and um, yeah, it was my first go at it, and I was really really happy with the end product. Yeah, I love the um, you have a photo that you sent me with the eye. That was uh, yeah, that was awesome. That man. was just <laughs> yeah, that was just uh, we were playing around during filming and. I was like, I gotta get a picture of this. Oh, this definitely. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely one for the Christmas cards, you know? So. For sure, yeah. Um, so tell me more about uh, Mostly Harmless Pictures. Uh, give me, what's the idea behind this? Uh, where are you guys going? What's your goal? Um, we, um, gosh, we just got started, you know? I mean, it's, it's been a long journey, and um, we it's it's more you know my husband's work and he's he's made a couple of music videos made a couple of trailers just like fake grindhouse trailers mm -hmm. and he did um and then he, we started on time to kill and we got the trailer done for that and then we did play me and then we're doing time to kill and that's that's all we have right now um i'm really hoping that um time to kill does really well i feel like it will We've yeah. got a great cast. I feel like we've got, I mean, Brian Williams is doing everything. Nice. He's doing editing, filming, um, casting. It's it's kind of, he, he doesn't want anybody else to like. It's his baby. Yeah, it's like his vision and he wants to do it. So um, Good for him. That's great. Yeah, we're, we're really hoping that, that good things come from that film. 
Fantastic. And it's like, what, an exploitation-type horror film? It's like a 60s exploitation grindhouse. I wouldn't really even call it a horror film, really? honestly. Okay. I mean, it's got, obviously, like, you know, a little gore and, and stuff like that, but it's really more a, of a grindhouse exploitation style. Excellent. Thanks. Um, another one from Facebook. Um, they said to describe yourself in three words. Oh, God. Right? <laughs> That's a really tough one. Um, I feel like I'm fun, so I'm going to say fun. Okay. Uh, <laughs> wow, this is a hard one. That's a hard one, huh? Yeah. Um, I'm, a bit, I'm a little crude, I guess. Okay. <laughs> so fun and crude. So that's fun. It's fun anyway. Yeah, so it's fun no matter what. Yeah. Almost the same word. <laughs> and, uh. Man. Busy. Oh, yeah. I guess. I mean, I've been, I've been really busy lately, so I don't know. That's. That's a rough one. Yeah, that, that I, When I saw that, I was like, wow, I'm definitely having to throw that one at you, so. Because I couldn't come up with three words for myself. My wife could very easily, though. We won't talk <laughs> about that. So, all right. Yeah, now, right? <laughs> um, so where you're going in the direction for, for acting and, and, and the fact that you could do, um, I mean, you did make up really well from what I saw in, in just that 10-minute movie. Um, I mean, are you going to where you want to go? I mean, where do you see yourself in the next, you know, five years, maybe even two years? Like, what's next for Ellie Church besides what you're doing right now? Um, what I do is not something that I do to get somewhere big. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm doing is because I want to have the most fun that I possibly can with my life. Um, if something's not fun, if something doesn't sound fun for me or sound like an adventure, I won't do it. Very well put. Um, you know, I've had roles where I'll read the script and you know, I won't be crazy about it and maybe it will pay. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm still like, well, this doesn't sound like any fun. So. Yeah, once the art be becomes work, uh, it kind of loses the fun factor, I think. so. And I'm in it for the life experiences, quite honestly. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And uh, I think that's great, man, because um, it's too many times you see too many bad films come out and you can obviously tell it's just for a dollar, you know, so. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, so besides Time to Kill, what what's next? Do you guys have anything else on the table that you're planning out or? No, nope. uh, we, we uh, as far as Mostly Harmless Pictures, no. Um, I did, um, I did a film in Philly in August called Hunters. Okay. Um, I'm really excited about that one. It's going to be just awful and disgusting and brutal <laughs> sounds awesome <laughs> awful in a wonderful way right. uh, yeah i mean uh the impersonators I actually did a comedy so that was the only comedy that i've ever done okay uh superhero comedy it's and it's the uh, impersonators uh-huh yeah and that one uh is due to be out uh, i think the end of this year maybe early next year and who's so, that through um it's arsonist pictures the okay. director is joshua hull and what's and, your role in that? Uh, Lady Feline, which is actually the generic Catwoman. We all have like generic um, other superhero roles that we're doing. Uh, we're birthday party impersonators. Nice. <laughs> that sounds awesome. So we'll have to look for that for sure. I might have to call you up again for that one because that sounds amazing. So, um, <laughs> yeah. so in the end, someone asked me on, on Facebook as well. Um, if you had any advice for a young uh, girl like my daughter, for instance, I have a nine-year-old nine-year-old daughter who um, I show her clips slowly, get her into the genre, so to speak. Um, but any anything that she sees where there's a female lead, I always try to to exploit that to her because you know in a positive way. And um, she walked in actually when my wife and I were watching, and then you die uh, one night, and. Uh, I was like, oh, oh, you can't. And then she wanted to know exactly who you were and everything else. So for somebody like herself who who is seeing these women in, in roles that are, are, you know, mainly for the men mostly in a dominated fashion, um, what can you give advice-wise? Like what can you say to these little girls who want to be basically the next you? Um, I mean, 
I don't ever do anything that I don't feel completely comfortable with. I, I, I would tell, I would tell girls, don't ever do anything that you don't want to do. There's and there's a lot of people out there that are going to try to, to get you to do things that you're not comfortable with. Um, if I'm comfortable with with who I'm working with, and if I'm comfortable with the situation and the role, then I will do it. But I, um, but there are a lot of people out there that are just going to try to get more and more and more out of you. And if if you let them do that, then they'll just keep will just keep doing it. Right. So. Um, don't ever do anything that you're not comfortable with. Awesome. Uh, going back to Play Me, how, 10 minutes, how long did it take for you guys to make that? Uh, writing or filming? Like, we, I think we did writing for like three, three days. Okay. Uh, filming was, uh, we filmed all the beginning black and white in one day. Wow. And then the effects were two nights. Okay. Uh, so really it was like, a five-day process, but not all day, every day. Right, right. That's awesome. It, was, it went very smoothly. Uh, Brian puts together shot lists that are extremely detailed, so it makes everything go real, real easy. Very nice. That's great. Um, so what are you guys going to do with that film? Is there something that, are you submitting that? Is there a place where people can go and be able to view this? Uh, where can you direct yes, people uh, to we, um, it is on a collection called The Collective, okay. and it's The Coll Collective, Volume 6, and um, it's uh, uh, put out by Jab Pictures. They have, obviously, six, you know, five other ones. Mm -hmm. There are ten directors, ten short films, and um, one theme, and the theme of The Collective, Volume 6, is um, Your Greatest Fear, so the director's greatest fear. Gotcha. Uh, every collective has a theme. The theme before was a zombie theme, um, and so you you have to just put together your own film, and it has to include whatever the theme is. Um, I think the next one is called Skeleton Key, so it just has to have a skeleton key, okay. which is super easy right. <laughs> to right. do. But yeah, we can uh, we, they can buy them from me. I have them at every convention. I have the collective. Um, uh, Jack Pictures always, you know, obviously has the collective. They that's who put it out, and um, yeah, mostly harmless pictures. Sounds good. Yeah, we sell them, and you can purchase one. <laughs> that, that sounds great. Uh, we'll make sure that, um, that we'll post that so people know where to go, and because uh, I definitely think that needs to be in the hands of a lot of people. Uh, it was that good in my opinion. So um, that's it. All I had for you. I appreciate your time. No problem. Thank you very much. And I appreciate that you're drinking Paps as well. So <laughs> that uh, makes me very happy. Um, so that's it. Well, um, I, had, I had steel reserve in the fridge, but I thought I didn't want right. to tonight. So. Yeah, that's too, that's too gangster for this right now. So easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Ellie. I appreciate it. Hey, great job um, what you and your husband are doing, man. That's awesome. I'm glad. I love seeing like couples doing something that they love and can do it together. Sounds uh -huh. like you guys nailed it. So. That's awesome. Thank you so much. So, uh, last bit, is there any conventions that you have coming up that we can uh, promote for you to get people out there, all that good stuff? Well, uh, we're coming to the end of convention season. There's not usually yeah. any in uh, in the winter months, and there's not very many in the fall months. We have Days of the Dead Indianapolis coming up. Mm -hmm. Or no, sorry, Chicago. I think nice. that's uh, the weekend of 17th, and I think we're only going to be there Saturday and Sunday, and that's our last convention of the year. Okay. But I feel like the next one is uh, the, the Spring Horror Hound. Mm -hmm. We're at every Horror Hound, uh, and every Days of the Dead, for the most part. I think there's one that we don't go to that's far away, but... Okay. <laughs> well, thanks again, Ellie. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Have a good night. Bye.